Hello and welcome back. In this video, we'll discuss LDAP and SSO. We'll first take a look at LDAP, or Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. LDAP is an industry standard for directory services that defines the structure for users and groups within an organization. The most popular LDAP solution is Microsoft Active Directory, but there are many others out there for just about any operating system. An LDAP integration is used to authenticate users and populate users and groups in ServiceNow. The integration is read-only, so ServiceNow cannot modify the company's LDAP system, only read from it. There are two main parts to an LDAP integration in ServiceNow. The first is the authentication piece. If an LDAP integration is successfully configured between ServiceNow and the LDAP software, then users can access their ServiceNow accounts by using their LDAP credentials. ServiceNow will authenticate through the LDAP service to verify a user's authenticity. This means that ServiceNow must be able to communicate with the LDAP service when the user attempts to log in. The other part to LDAP is data population. This handles populating ServiceNow with user and group data from the LDAP service. While this is not required, it makes maintaining user and group data much easier. If Susan changes her last name in Active Directory, the data will automatically propagate to ServiceNow. Such updates can either be scheduled via scheduled imports or use other methods such as an LDAP listener, which triggers updates based on events inside the LDAP software. So, for example, if an LDAP admin changes a user's last name, an update event would be triggered causing the change to be pushed to ServiceNow. Now we'll briefly discuss SSO or Single Sign-On. Single Sign-On allows users to have one set of credentials for all applications which are configured with their SSO provider. This can be very convenient for users and is often more secure than storing separate credentials for each system. Authenticating users in ServiceNow can leverage an organization's SSO solution. Whether the organization has a third-party SSO solution or an in-house SSO solution, the SSO application in ServiceNow can handle many different configuration types, including SAML 2.0 and OpenID. When a user requests access to ServiceNow for the first time, the user will be taken to the single sign-on site to log in with their SSO credentials. Once they've successfully logged in, the SSO provider gives the user's browser session an authorization token. It then redirects the user to ServiceNow, where the user's browser provides the authorization token. ServiceNow will verify this token with the SSO provider. Once it is verified, the user can then access their ServiceNow account. If the user already has an authorization token from accessing another system, the user can go directly into ServiceNow without logging in. Much of this process is completely invisible to the user. All the user sees is a login and then a few redirects. Configuring LDAP and SSO in ServiceNow is an advanced topic and is not required for the ServiceNow administration exam. Because of this, we'll only do a quick walkthrough of the applications in ServiceNow so you have a general understanding of them. So here we are in ServiceNow and we'll start by typing LDAP in the application navigator. We'll click on LDAP servers and we can see an example server here. 
we'll go into this record. And here we see a number of fields, such as the name, the credentials for LDAP, the starting search directory, the LDAP server URL and status, as well as timeout and listener information and the advanced options. If we scroll down, we see a number of links in the related links, such as test connection, show LDAP listener status, browse the directory, and a few other options. These can be very helpful when configuring the LDAP structure for the first time. At the bottom, we have a related list of OU definitions. We'll go into the user's definition. Here we see information that is specific to the user structure in LDAP. We see an RDN, query field, filter, and target table. We also see a data source and the related links. If we go into this record, we can see even more fields. Finally, if we click the transform record, we are taken to the transform map. We'll discuss transform maps in section 8. Keep in mind that a lot of the data that is specific to LDAP should be provided to you from an organization's LDAP administration group. Even though we just briefly walked through the application, you can see that configuring an LDAP server can be quite advanced. Now we'll turn our attention towards SSO. In order to configure SSO, you must first install the single sign-on plugin. Once the plugin is installed, we'll navigate to the SAML2 application. Here we can see a number of modules. We'll go into the Properties module. There are a number of properties that are a part of the SSO configuration, and you'll need to work with your SSO provider in order to properly configure these properties. The Certificates module is where you can upload a number of different X509 certificates for SAML. There are also login scripts, logout scripts, and script objects for the SSO configuration. We only scratched the surface of LDAP and SSO. Again, these are advanced configurations and will not be covered any further in this course. If you would like to know more about these subjects, I recommend checking out the ServiceNow documentation. That concludes Section 6. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in Section 7.